Once you've removed the screws from the back, there are six of them, you can take the case apart, remove the front cowling, and that front grate shield. Then you're going to remove two screws that are there and there. And when they're gone, you can remove this piece. And now you're left with the unit that looks like this. And you've got a chamber here that's covered by a mesh and a piezo ignition source, just like your barbecue has. So next, what we're going to do is go through a conversion process to turn this into a catalytic hand warmer rather than a bug repeller. Before we get started on putting some catalyst into this unit, let's explore the anatomy of this guy so that it'll help us gain an understanding of why something may or may not work. We have the fuel supply down here at the bottom which are these butane bottles that are proprietary. However, a lot of um, YouTubers that are fishermen and the like have made up videos on how to refill these economically yourself so that you don't have to buy these. Then from this fuel chamber, which is pressurized, just similar to what a uh, butane lighter would be, like that. Here's the switch that turns the propane on and off. Once it's turned on, which um, is a little harder for me to do here because I don't have the case, but that's what happens when you turn it on. I can hear the propane, or sorry, I keep saying protein. Probably what I would recommend is a 20% butane propane mix if you're going to be doing your own refills. And I have made videos about how to do that on some of my uh, playlists where I'm working with winter stoves and refilling the butane canisters for those. Then the fuel runs up through the line here, goes into this burn chamber, which then has a piezo igniter, which is activated by pressing this switch. And then in theory, you'll get some ignition. Now you can see that, um, hopefully you can see here. So now we're gonna add some catalyst into this chamber and see if we can not obstruct the gap between the ignition wire. Now we're going to add some catalyst into this burn chamber. I will then um, put this back over the top. Two screw holes need to go toward the top to match up with those holes there. Before we put this all back together, another thought occurred to me which is another hack that would be optional if you wanted to contain the catalyst in there a little better. Then um, if you go to the dollar store, they have these uh, things here. I think Shio Must Be Obeyed bought it thinking that it was a condom and that if I wore it, it would discourage me from waking her up in the middle of the night with Amoris Advances. However, it's not a condom for over a Morris gentleman. It is a sink drain clogger that supposedly catches the uh, detritus from going down your drain and then you can pull it out and clean it. However, if you can find one of those, it might be possible to adapt that by cutting uh, some of the end of it off. Unravel like that and then possibly cut some of that off and then work it in there and see how you're going. I'm gonna cut off maybe about that much. Now once you've got it all back together, if your igniter is not giving you any joy in terms of getting this catalyst activated in there and now you can see that 
couple things I'd like to point out that uh, mesh drain s screener condom thingy that I cut is now stuck underneath the grill and seems to be held in place by the pressure of the grill alone and also I'd like to point out from uh, my previous attempts at igniting through the grill if I left the flame on it too long I you probably can't see it but I can see the grill right where the flame was left too long is starting to burn or melt there but it does appear that if I went in from the sides with a lighter it could withstand that and again I think that's just the mesh there smoking um, coming in from the sides it seems to have more tolerance to that and uh, just don't leave the flame in any place at one time too long to avoid uh, melting that grill down so if I go in from the sides I'm getting some smoke I think probably from uh, some residual oil that was uh, on this stainless steel drain sieve thing there so give that um, a few tries now that I can see a bit of a glow here in the center I am going to simulate a pocket and uh, being a Shio must be obeyed is not home to catch me I'm going to um, temporarily use this meat thermometer to see what kind of temperature we could expect to get from this if it was inside a pocket. So we can see that after um, 10 or 15 minutes our virtual pocket here has gotten us up to about the same temperature as a Johnny Giant or an S Boston or something like that at 177 Fahrenheit and still creeping up as you can see there. Now let's go over some of the cautions uh, that you might want to entertain if you do go about uh, converting one of these into a pocket warmer. So I'll put the general precautions for when you're working with butane fuel for lighters and whatnot in the notes below and because they are a general set of cautions that you can use for working with any kind of pressurized butane fuel and let's get specifically as to something more that may apply to whether you do this first of all because our kits do contain this uh, nice and handy carbon felt another use for this carbon felt can be for if you want to leave this thing and you're worried about it overheating on a surface um, you can just set it on carbon felt and there's no way that it's going to burn through the carbon felt and overheat something that's on the other side of it. Then if you um, find that you're going to, generally I can put my hand on that right now, but if you're in your pocket and you don't want to um, burn yourself or have other stuff come into contact such as let's say keys or something would penetrate through that grill <clears throat> not a good idea to put it in a pocket with anything else except for when your hands go in once in a while but you can get yourself one of these generic mesh pouches and they just happen to be a good size for slipping it over the hand warmer and then carry it in your pocket like that now there's some other precautions that are stated on the back I'm going to have to lift this in order to read it and um, I'm wearing the wrong glasses so I'm going to have to bring it up close to my head but it says don't use it um, near fire or flame only for outdoor use as an insect repellent do not use indoors uh, and so on and so forth do not touch the grill while the appliance is in use we're talking about that grill is hot when in use place on a flat or stable surface grill facing upward do not cover with any material while in use do not expose appliance to rain so one of the um, reasons why you don't want to be using this insect propeller indoors is because the pyrethrins and other types of chemicals that they use for repelling mosquitoes are 
not a healthy thing to be inhaling. So <clears throat> when you've done this conversion and you, you don't have an insect repellent pad in here, what uh, a complete combustion or reaction results in is water and carbon dioxide. And so I haven't been that concerned with having it here on my workbench because I'm not letting off mosquito repellent fumes. I believe that that is probably very instrumental in terms of why they're saying don't use this indoor or in a tent. But do be aware in a very tight confined closed space that you are using oxygen up out of your environment in order to create this reaction and so where I wouldn't have my pet hamster in my pocket with this because he might suffocate in a large room or even in a tent for example uh, you are probably going to be okay in the long run however this is not going to be heating a tent anyway so um, this is more intended to be outside with you perhaps in your pocket perhaps in a pouch keeping your pocket warm or if you can figure out some way to get this on a lanyard maybe around your neck under your jacket this appears to me to be something that probably facilitates a belt clip or something of that sort and I think I've seen fishermen wearing these on their belts or whatever which I suppose the intent of that is for so why on earth, you may ask, would I want to turn one of these thermocells into a pocket warmer? And probably the most prevalent reason would be that because the butane is being used up in this reaction, there are no residual fumes that I can smell that... Uh, require you to use a deodorant like you do with a liquid fuel hand warmer and even with the deodorant you still get those um, rather obnoxious uh, offshoot fumes that you smell all the time with this you don't receive that so that's probably the one main advantage of that the other uh, would be that you can use it in your pocket uh, which would appear to be fairly safe and uh, it does this one has been reigniting with the piezo switch for me so that does make it convenient and uh, overall it remains to be seen how effective this really will be because I have also yet to really test this in the field these butane canisters or whatever you call them the bottles and I just make up my own plan for refueling I refilled this Primus power gas canister with a 35% mix of isobutane and propane and um, that's what in fact they do use as anyway when you buy these canisters in the outdoors store um, Again, I have made videos on refilling these canisters and how to uh, refill them with propane butane mix. And as well, you're going to need one of these adapters that allows you to refill lighters and um, other things such as this. And this does require a modification that some other YouTube uh, videos have discussed. In conclusion, if you've already got uh, one of the hand warmer kits and you've got some catalysts such as uh, when you bought the larger pad and you have one of these then there probably isn't any reason why not to give it a shot. You uh, just need to remove the six screws on the back and um, there's two screws holding this guy in but once this is out you can set it aside for your next summer season and it's easy enough just to uh, put this back in to the thermocell and restore it back to its original intent if you want to start using those insect repellent pads again to repel mosquitoes so it's not like a destructive mod 
where you're committed to one or the other, now you can use this device year-round.